This is a study uh, of glufitumab, which is a bispecific CD3, CD20 antibody designed for the treatment of uh, B-cell malignancies, targeting CD20 on the tumor cells and CD3 on the cytotoxic T-cells. And this is a compound which has proven very active as a single agent in the treatment of both indolent and aggressive uh, non-Hodgkin lymphomas. So in this study, uh, the drug was combined with polytuzumab pedotin, which is also a potent uh, drug, not so much as a single agent, but it's been successfully combined with chemotherapy, particularly uh, rituximab and bendamustine, uh, and as such has been approved for the treatment of relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma together with these compounds. So uh, the rationale behind the study was really that uh, the uh, um, mechanisms of action of polytuzumab vedotin on one side and glufitumab on the other side are really quite different. And also the profiles of safety, uh, the side effect profiles are really uh, different, both uh, in their mechanism, also uh, in terms of the time where they appear because the main side effect of glufitumab is cytokine release syndrome, which is usually manageable, but uh, more importantly, almost invariably occurs only during the first three to four weeks of treatment, and then it's over. Whereas polytuzumab pedotin, the most important side effects are cytopenias, which uh, can occur at any time during treatment, and polyneuropathy, uh, which usually is a cumulative effect, so occurring quite late during treatment. Okay, so uh, the purpose of the study was to look at preliminary uh, safety and uh, as a secondary objective, the, uh, the efficacy of the combination. So safety first, it was a quite safe combination. So uh, we did see uh, um, cytokine release syndrome to, a, to, a, to some extent. Uh, of roughly just over 40% of patients experience cytokine release syndrome with about one third of those being grade two. Uh, there were no cases of grade three or four CRS. There was one fatal case of CRS uh, in a patient who uh, deteriorated after initial treatment for the cytokine release syndrome and then refused further treatment. So. What can be the uh, explanation for the relatively low frequency of CRS? It's actually lower than uh, with uh, glufitumab single agent. Well, in the single agent study, uh, mitigation of CRS was, uh, was done by uh, steroid prophylaxis during, uh, before every treatment. That was the same in this study. Then all patients in the single agent study also had a single dose of uh, obinutuzumab prior to the first dose of glufitumab, which is uh, uh, reducing the, the uh, receptor occupancy of the bispecific, also reducing CRS. But in the case of this study, all patients had not only obinutuzumab prior to the first glufitumab, but also a dose of uh, polytuzumab for dotin. So perhaps the anti-tumor effect of the initial therapy has helped even further reduce the seriousness and the frequency of cytokine release. Then there is efficacy. It was a potent combination with an overall response uh, of, ar of around 80%, including 51% complete responses. And interestingly, this study included only patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and a variance of that disease. So around 60% of de novo diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and around 40% of patients with either transformed follicular lymphoma or high-grade B-cell lymphoma, which is some pretty difficult to treat uh, diseases particularly in the relapsed refractory setting. So among the patients with, with uh, transformed follicular lymphoma and high-grade B-cell lymphoma, response rates were really quite on par with the overall population, including complete responses. And out of the 25 patients, out of the 25 patients out of 49 evaluable patients uh, entered a, a complete response, and at the time of the most recent data cut, 23 out of those 25 patients still maintain that complete response. The study in in all contained uh, up to the data cut 59 patients, uh, six of whom had been treated at uh, a final dose of glufitumab of 10 milligrams. The remaining 53 patients were treated at the full dose which is now also the recommended phase two dose of glufitumab, 30 milligrams, um, but 10 patients had not made it to the, uh, to the first uh, assessment of response by the time of the data cut. The study also uh, included some uh, relatively interesting, in my eyes, uh, uh, data on the uh, pharmacodynamics. So we uh, saw the expected reductions after each of the first three administrations of glufitumab in circulating T-cells, and this 
this is ju just in line with what we've seen uh, in single agent use of glufidumab sort of proving the concept that the T-cell activation and the uh, uh, margination of T-cells which occurs after single agent use is also present in the, in the presence of, uh, of uh, polytuzumapidotin pretreatment. And there were also uh, data presented on the uh, release of cytokines uh, after the first three administrations of lofitimab and we see the same rise in interferon gamma as well as the other important cytokines, IL-6, IL-8, as we would expect to see with single agent use. So, in other words, glufidumab works as well in the presence of polytuzumab vidotin as without.